The Shark Deck. Hey, man, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news, the South China Morning Post. Say it with me. It's your home for comedy news. They were talking to John Cleese. You remember that? I mentioned him yesterday. Well, there was more to that article. Why is Cleese still working? John addressed it. He said, have a look at the figures of my third divorce. (laughs) But they were like, surely by now, Alice, his American ex-spouse of 16 years, has been paid off. John said, not really. Have you ever paid anybody $20 million? It's not the matter of an overnight success. I'm living in an 11,000 square foot property in London. When I divorced, I had five properties. Switching topics, John said, the only thing I know is that in any interview I do now, even if it's about the sexual mating habits of a lemur, cancel culture will come up in the next few minutes. I think there are more important things than cancel culture. And if I keep feeding it by talking about it, we're going to forget about the important things. If people ask, do you think it's okay for people to shout nasty things at each other? The answer is no, I agree. It's not okay. But the question is, what do we do about it? Do we try and legislate to make people be better human beings? Because that's been tried in the past by other forms of Puritans. It hasn't worked out very well. Cleese talked about his time in James Bond and said, uh, you know, they're caught up in a world where the only thing that matters is each film makes more money than the last one. And if you discover that the audience for Bond films is in the Philippines and Indonesia and South Korea, then there's not much point in putting humor in that's only going to be appreciated by an audience that speaks English. And I think that's sad. Did you watch this season of The Bear? It was fantastic. Now, I think Hulu lost out on a lot of buzz by just dropping it all at once. I think that could have had a lot of sustained conversation around it this season, especially if they had put it out weekly and that sixth episode with John Mulaney in it. It could have been a lot of talk around it. I did not know Rami Youssef directed the fourth episode of The Bear this season. That's the episode Honeydew in which Marcus makes a trip to Copenhagen. While prepping for the episode, Yousef and Lionel Boyce, who plays Marcus, studied at Noma, largely considered to be the best restaurant in the world. Rami told GQ, I kept telling everybody at Noma I'd worked at a restaurant before, which I had, but I had worked at Panera Bread when I was 16. It was just really funny to be at Noma and talk about working at Panera. Will Polzer, who guest starred in the episode, said, I heard him tell at least five people that he worked at Panera Bread over the course of our two-day shoot. Exclaim, a cool Canadian website, caught up with Hari Kondabolu, and he said... The problem with Apu and its ensuing controversy over race and representation was a dividing line in his career. He doesn't hesitate when he feels if his life, working and otherwise, has been altered by the film and its reception. Hurry said, I do, it's frustrating, but the reality is what my career was before and after is completely different. Before that, I was certainly less known. I did fine in the comedy world, but, and I'm yawning while I'm talking about this because I'm bored of the topic, for the people who knew my stand-up, doing the documentary wouldn't have surprised them that I'd do something like that. My stand-up is more aggressive and brutal than what the documentary was. That's a pop culture documentary about a cartoon character, but it doesn't delve into the depth of racism like normally I'd want to. Certainly wasn't the documentary I intended to make either. I wanted to make something where I wasn't the central figure in it. I wanted it to be about the history of that accent, but also the history of minstrelsy in this country and the hazing process that people of color have to go through. And I wanted it to be a bunch of interviews cut together with me, maybe doing a voiceover. But once you sell it to a cable network, that's not going to work. It's a different vehicle. It certainly got watered down for what I wanted to do, and it was still an interesting process for me to go through, but it certainly wasn't interesting in terms of the content. Wow. It's not complicated. The idea of having to prove to people that this character is racist and has racial overtones, it's obvious. The idea that I had to prove that in a film is almost insulting in a way if you actually grew up with it. Why does this need to be proven? Just listen to the character. The Simpsons didn't really do anything with the character and kind of just hid from it. It's frustrating because people tell me I wanted to kill this character, which I don't give a hoot about the character. Nobody watches The Simpsons anyway is what I thought until I realized around the world they still do because I get death threats in Spanish and Portuguese now. Do you love your Peloton? Oh, I sure do. Well, I know you do because you started a podcast about one. If you love your Peloton and can't get enough of it and all the news that goes along with it, you should check out our show. It's called The Clip Out. It's a great place to go for instructor news, new classes, motivational tips, corporate machination. We don't just tell you the news. We also give you our thoughts on why things are happening. And each week we also interview a member of the Peloton community. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, somebody like like me, just a regular person riding their bike. Sometimes it's snooky. You never know. You never know. The clip out is about anyone who loves their Peloton. Every week we take you behind the scenes and inside the world of Peloton. The clip out is available wherever you get your podcasts or check out our website. Theclipout.com.
Paste Magazine did their 10 best comedy specials of 2023 so far, and I thought I'd click on it. I'm looking at this for the first time as I record, because I like to react to these. Let's see who Paste has on there. Number 10, Mark Marin from Bleak to Dark. I like Marin a lot. Been into his podcast a lot lately. I did not love this particular special. Number nine, Josh Johnson's Up Here Killing Myself. I haven't seen this one. Paste writes, New York-based comedian Josh Johnson describes growing up poor with candor and, of course, humor during the first part of Up Here Killing Myself. Whether recounting his seamless bag his family cereal came from or the questionable quality of their local pharmacy, he paints an effective picture. His turn of phrase is conversational yet inventive, elevating stories that were already funny to begin with. Number eight, Brad Wenzel's Joke, Joke, Joke. I'm not familiar with this one. Let's see. Joke, Joke, Joke is just that, a succession of hilarious bits without any segues. Wenzel's good nature laughter acting as the glue that holds it all together. The special's 40-minute length is just right for Wenzel's type of comedy, not overstaying its welcome or leaving us feeling short-changed. I'm going to add that to my must-watch list. Hmm. Number seven, John Mulaney's Baby J. I didn't love it. Uh... It was okay. Number six, Nate Bergazzi's Hello World. I think that's one of the best of the year. Five, May Martin's SAP. Not the target audience there. I didn't enjoy it. Didn't make it through. Number four, Emma Arnold's Myself. Haven't seen this one. Paste writes, sometimes you can watch a comedy special and you just want to wrap it around yourself like a warm blanket. She takes to the stage with the ease and joy of someone who loves what they do. Myself is thoroughly hilarious and disproves the tired thinking that artists must suffer to make something great. She jokes she should just quit comedy now that she's so happy. All right, I'm going to add that to my list, too. Wanda Sykes, I'm an entertainer. I don't think I have checked that out. Well, I, I know I haven't checked it out. I don't remember why. Number two, Hurry Kondabolu's Vacation Baby. I like that special a lot, although I like Nate's better. And they have number one, John Early's Now More Than Ever. I know people are buzzing about that one. I think it's for a younger crowd than me. I do have a few gray hairs. And I watched it, and I was like, is this brilliant? Is this horrible? And I couldn't tell. Vulture has their list. Let's take a look. This was updated on June 27th. Theirs are listed from newest to oldest. They have John Early, all right. Ali Sadiq's The Domino Effect Part 2, Loss. John Mulaney. Monique's My Name is Monique. May Martin SAP again. Kyle Kinane, Shocks and Struts. That is, at the time of this recording, my number one of the year. Marlon Wayans, God Loves Me. I tried that one and I lasted, I don't know, five minutes. And Mark Marin's From Bleak to Dark. I already addressed that one. I'm actually recording this on July 4th. Why, Johnny Mac? Well, uh, it started to pour rain and I had this script ready and I'm like, eh, might as well go down and record it. So my plan here on July 4th, two weeks ago to you, is actually to watch Tom Segura tonight. I suspect that's going to make my best of list. I'm really excited about it. And I might check out some of the others. But prior to recording those, here's my list. Kyle Kinane, Nate Bergazzi, Jay McBride, Daddy's Girl, Jim Jeffries, that was on Amazon back in February, Hari Kanabo, Chris Rock. Remember that? That was a big deal. Nobody talks about it. The Roast of Mr. Peanut, which everybody looks at me like I'm crazy, and then they take my advice and they watch it. You'll find it on YouTube. Watch the full 15-minute Roast of Mr. Peanut. It's really good. Big J. Okerson, Sarah Silverman, and then I have John Narrowly on my list. Okay, I have him at number 10, but like I said, I'm planning on watching Segura later today, and you've probably heard me talk about it in the last two weeks, and that'll probably make the list as well. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Smash the like button. See you tomorrow.